Welcome back to the Real O Show podcast. Me and Joshua today wrap up 2022. You know, some goals we have going forward, looking back on the end of the year. Really good one. Really had a good conversation. But before we get into the show, if you're watching on YouTube, please drop us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, share. If you're listening on audio, please, you can still share it. You can still leave us a review. We appreciate all the support. in 2022 this has been i don't know six eight months we've been doing this now like hard really been thinking about really trying to pursue this vision this content this brand dream what is the biggest thing you've personally learned in this journey so far the thing that i've learned the most is do and by like that i mean do it if you don't know what you're doing do it because that's the only way to learn. I've also learned there's a lot of people that talk about it without actually doing it. So a lot of frauds. Yeah, in a for sense. sure. So it's like I would say I've learned to just do. And that's from full content wise as we talk. Yeah, I would agree with that 100% honestly because I think a lot of it comes from you don't know what you don't know, which is something you always say. Like you, you know what you don't know. You don't, um, know. you don't know. So, apologies. You don't know what you don't know. And I think that comes from doing also from, you know, our first vlog and our first podcast to this podcast right now. I think we look like two different people. I think it's two different like vlogs. It's two different podcasts. We've, we've grown up in the process. I think we've kind of found our niche, our way um, of where we kind of want to do it. So I would say definitely do, but I would just like, I think one thing that I'm still struggling with and, you know, I don't know where you're at on it. I think it's just patient, like being patient with it that, you know, it's definitely going to take time. And obviously some we talk about a lot, some, someone who inspires us a lot is like Gary, where he always talks about, he's like, man, I made videos every single day for four fucking years before anybody gave a shit. And I think through the process of, yeah, we've been going relatively hard for six, eight months, however long it's been, that it's just like, we've, we're still like in little league yeah. with it. So I think it's just trying to stay patient and just know like day after day, just get up, think of some content ideas, you know, do a podcast, do a vlog and just, you know, you never know what's going to pop. You never know what the market's going to like. And I think that's another thing. The market will tell you what's good and not. Um, but just having the patience through yeah. the process. Everyone wants to arrive. And I know that that's like the hardest part. Like everyone wants to be there. Yeah. And I've actually like been like reflecting a lot of myself lately. And I've been like thinking like, these are like the times where we're, you know, we're we're living tight, right? Like sure. we're we're doing jobs that are, you know, like we're hustling. Yeah. And it's like we're at that stage in our life and I thought about it, you know, I was watching these dudes that had a ton of money and they're sitting there talking about the old days of like how fun it was like in the trenches. And I thought to myself, I'm like, bro, this these are like the golden days. For sure. Like these are the days you look back at and you're like, bro, we were fucking hustling. Like, how do we do that? It's like the ride. How do we how do we do how do we work sixty hours and then for a job and then be like Oh, then let's turn around and do 20, 30 more hours of our own shit. Like, and then plus sleep and plus exercise, you know, I would say eat healthy, but I can't say what I do. <laughs> I do my best too. I mean, it's hard, bro, when you're living on a budget, but you got to have some grimy it's also, meals. And, it's, and, 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 and I always call it, it's convenience, right? Like I'm convenience. like the person, like I'm editing and I'm doing all these things. So I'm like, look at my computer screen for like 13 hours, 14 hours. Yeah. And it's like to get out of that funk of like, I'm just trying to create. And when you're creating, it's like, that's all I can think about. Yeah. If I got everything else on and the T like, bro, I, it's just distractions. Yeah. I have to be dialed into that situation or else you're, you're fucked. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I completely agree. So what is one thing going into 2023? Obviously we, we have the wheels turning a little bit, definitely starting to meet some people that like what we do, want to be in our space starting to develop that network. So what is one thing in 2023 that you're looking forward to? Collaboration. I think that the like, biggest wow, thing, that's a good one. I think the biggest thing for me is, is for us, like the network that we're building is to utilize like the people, like a lot of the people that we're in with, they want to create. And yeah. a lot of people that like want to do like, like we had Danny on yeah. you know, the last pod and it's like, he was like, oh, I admire you guys for creating. And it's like, yeah, like it's because a lot of people do it as a job 
but outside are like, man, I could do this, this, and this. And it's like, do it. Yeah. Like, try it. And it's like us bringing, you know, like a Danny along or some of our other friends along. It's like, not only does that help our page, but it's like, it helps them get out of their shell and be like, damn, I might start doing this myself. And some of them already do it. Like, we're going to have some people on the podcast in the future in 2023 that are doing their own hustle. They have yeah. very big followings on their own that they just want to get into different aspects, podcasting, YouTube, or whatever. So I think, like, for us to collaborate, and it's like, we're learning. Like, someone who's already had a following or done whatever, like, if we can take a little bit from them, give a little bit to them, like, like we're just helping each other, right? Like, you're helping the wall be built. We built the foundation. Now it's just work. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I didn't have any goals or like aspirations for 2023 because I just feel like I'm so stuck in like the day to day where I'm just like, like we did this podcast, right? Like we're doing this podcast right now. Like, all right, so what are we going to do tomorrow? Like it's, I, I'm so like in that mode where it's hard to me to be like, okay, over the next 365 days, what are we trying to accomplish? But the collaboration part is spot on. Um, I think, I think that is big. I also just enjoy having somebody else on that appreciates not even really like what we do. It's just more so like the space. Obviously if they're doing stuff with us, they probably appreciate what we do. They probably see something. They're probably like, okay, these guys are, could be something. Right. Um, obviously no one's going to go on a page. They're like despise, but I think it's just, it, it, it's the, it's like the fact that we're all kind of just going towards the same goal working together. And I think that's where, that's my favorite part is just helping yeah. somebody like having Danny on. Right. Yeah. where he was on the show and the first like two minutes he was swiveling in his chair, right? He's going crazy. And it's just like, but then by the end of it, shout out Danny, yeah. it, but, but by the end of it, it's like he was calm, relaxed, like not moving. It's yeah. like, in my eyes, it's like fun because it's like he was nervous, got out of his shell a little bit, then relaxed. Like I like seeing that part. And it's like, yeah. I still get nervous every once in a while. Like if I feel like, and we, you know, I don't know. Like, if we go do a vlog and we don't have an idea, like, yeah. I get a little nervous. So I'm like, fuck, what are we going to do? Yeah. But as long as we have, like, a general idea and, like, obviously podcasting to me is just almost second nature at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's definitely better. Like, I mean, how we kind of podcast, too, like, we're in very short form. So it's like yeah. we're trying to, like, get it in really quick because we're trying to keep our audience. But it's like, you know, like Joe Rogan, it's just them just chilling. Like, they're hanging out. Yeah. It's like they're literally just hanging That's almost easier, the mic. I feel like. No, way, it's way easier because he's, there's no there's no direction. And obviously, obviously, he has directions at times. But, I mean, Joe Rogan reads a ton. For sure. So he's super educated on whoever he Joe has on or goat. he knows them personally. He's the GOAT. Like, him, he's the him, GOAT. Him, him, all right. Joe Rogan is incredible, but one guy I've talked about a lot, and I don't, you've, you've definitely seen some stuff, is like Patrick Bet David, I think is literally yeah. the best interviewer yeah, he might be in the space. He... He is like, if I had to buy stock in one person, like, you know, Joe Rogan's the Apple stock. Yeah. Patrick Beck David is like the, a little bit above like a startup, like, like a mid-level company where it's like, yeah. bro, I would buy stock in Patrick sure. David because he is literally probably the best interview I've ever seen. He's yeah. super analytical. He, he reads, he's ready to go with every interview, can be in every conversation. And, it, and, he, and his podcast is about everything. He talks yeah. politics, yeah. investing, everything. Like, whereas... Yeah. Joe Rogan does a little politics, a little bit. I know he got in a little bit of trouble, so I think he's kind of yeah, he's pushed like, away from it a little bit. Sure. But I think Patrick Bet David kind of leads into that. He's like, nah, I don't give a fuck. Right. And I think that's what kind of is the, the I think difference. that's the key with it. Yeah, I, I like the way he interviews. I like the way he like grills people. Not like grill, but like he's oh, he, like, he's he'll not, ask the tough questions. No, no, he's, he's not, not scared a, of no, anything. No, yeah, he's, but like that just comes with preparation, right? Like, For sure. You're only, you're only able to do that because you're so secure in your shit. Like you know your shit so yeah. well that you're like, Bro, pick at me. I yeah. want you to. Yeah. Whereas, like, that's completely different. Like, and that's what I was saying with you. Like, and that's something I want to work on in 2023 is just, like, the process of podcasting, the process of, like, actually having a talk that's not just, like, bullshit. Yeah. Because you can have a good talk with one of your buddies, but, like, in reality, if you recorded it, you'd be like, wow, we were talking about a lot of shit. And it was yeah. really nothing. And I think that's the most important part. I think – I agree. I think there's. I think there's a time – where it's good to kind of like be broad and I understand we're kind of coming up. So it's like, you know, if you want to talk about something specific, it's better because it's like when people are searching it, right. Yeah. Our pod's going to come up. Whereas like, if you're talking about fucking a million different things, it's kind of hard to, yeah. you know, come up in the podcast. So I get that. I think that's something we can definitely work on. I also think it depends on the guests. Like you, you're talking about collaborate. I think it depends on the guests where it's like, you kind of have to put it in their hands. Like, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want to talk about? Like, you want them to be comfortable. Like, I don't want to bring somebody out and be like, 
no, we're going to talk about this. Like that's for sure. Like you know, you, you definitely, definitely want to be. Like, you want to give it in their hands and like talk about dating because he was our most recent like podcast. Whereas like he was like, no, I'm going to turn the interview on to you guys. Yeah. And it's like he was asking us questions, which sure. was fun as fuck because yeah. it's like we got to talk and really think about our answers and like yeah, we got to know Danny. But it's like we're for sure going to have Danny back on. Eventually, we'll get to interview him. Right. But it's like I thought that was like. That was super new, unique. He's like, nah, fuck that. I want to turn it back on you guys. For sure. And that, you know, that was special to me. Yeah. No, I, I would say, what is your, what was your biggest takeaway other than, I guess, what would your, what would be your biggest takeaway in the sense of like social media side, like not like, like not our stuff, just social media in general. Just, just in general. I mean, you could, you can do it. Like we, we learn a lot from our shit, right? Like, like I said, the reason why we have an upper hand on other people is because we do it. Like. We don't just talk about it. We do it. Like if I tell someone to post and do sh- like, like for example, we talk to some artists, right? Like we're talking to these artists and we're like, hey, you need to be posting every day. Hey, you should be taking your music, clipping it up and just trying to start trends, whatever. Like play your shit, showcase your shit because eventually someone's going to hear that song and be like, damn, yeah. that was big. Like think about how many TikTok, pe- like TikTok stars made some songs that are like one hit wonders. Now they're going on a tour. Like what the fuck? I probably found three to four artists that I really fuck with off TikTok alone in this past year, which is, I would say that's a lot. Like if I'm finding four different artists where like, once I find an artist and like them, it's like, unless they stop making music, I'm going to keep continue to listen to them. So it's like, they have a fan for like based off TikTok, but going into your question, man, I would say I'm going to kind of make this broad and more into like a social media aspect. I would say that when we first started doing this, I thought there was a lot more content creators and I thought it was almost harder to carve out your niche. And I think through doing this, I realized that not that many people are actually doing this. Not many people are actually creating and willing to put themselves out there like this. So for me, it almost gave me the confidence where it's like, as long as we keep going, like there's a chance. It's just like anything. Like if you keep showing up every day with consistent efforts, at some point, like we might be 40 fucking years old when it happens, right. but it's like, it still happens. And I think going into this, I was always like super insecure, right? Like as everybody is like yeah. artists are, and that's why I always relate kind of what we do to like music. Like, bro, we got to get in the studio. Like we got to sure. put our shots up. Right. Sure. And that's, was our first ever vlog was literally putting shots up. And ever since then, it's always became a term yeah. is because like you have to show up, like you have yeah. to do it because it's like, you got to fight through that insecurity. And like, even like Drake, the biggest artist out there, still has insecurities that people make fun of him for. And it's like, that dude is so much fucking bigger than everybody. For sure. And it's like, and I think going into this, Absolutely. it showed me that, yeah, you're going to be insecure about your own work, but it can still be good. Like you can still find your fans. Like people can still like it. And it just kind of, it, it kind of gave me some juice to be like, you know, I think we are going in the right direction and there, and there is a lane for us somewhere. Yeah. I think we're still trying to find that out. And that's what I tell you all the time. It's like, yeah. I don't want to put myself in the box where like, we're only going to talk about this because it's like some of my favorite podcasters and content creators are kind of all over the place. So like in my eyes, I'm like, I'd rather be all over the place and take a little bit longer to build because then when you find your audience, it's like, you can kind of go everywhere instead of like doing whatever, like we're just going to talk sports cards. Well, what happens when we get big? And it's like, man, we want to talk about fucking something else like anything like it's just like people are gonna be like ah and you know like the nelk boys are kind of running into that now and like nelk boys was one of our inspirations but it's like they're kind of running into that now with their podcast where they want to take it a different way i mean even like like you say the nelk boys like i watch like their mr beast podcast and it's like you see like even mr beast is like oh well that's like your guys's crowd like right like so it's like he everybody knows everyone thinks that and it's like you even saw like how kyle reacted and he was like no, like he was like, no, no, we're not really like that anymore. Like, yeah. cause he's like, he's trying to get out of that. And then, like I but said, the stereotype is but, still there, but it's like anything. So I'll give you another example. Like call her daddy. Right. When they were on barstool, you know, they were talking about sex, the Glock, Glock 3000. Yeah. Now she's sitting here being like women's rights. Like, like it's everything. Like it's like almost the complete opposite of what she was saying yeah. before. Like it was before like trick men to do whatever you want type of thing. Yeah. And like, and, I, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I I listened to the show back in the day. Like, I was some, there were some jokes shit yeah. in there, right? Listen now to a it's, couple episodes. And now it's like completely different. So it's like it's like the evolution of it. Like, yeah, they got famous this way, and you can break out of your box, but it is harder. Like, everyone's always gonna know you for that. For sure. And you might get fans. Like for me, I was a I would I wouldn't say fan, but like I listened to a couple yeah. episodes there, and then it's like now it's like I would I don't listen to that shit anymore. But it's like, yeah, that's the evolution, right? You're always gonna have fans. They're gonna you're gonna grow out of it, or they grow out of it. 
whatever it is, yeah. right? Like, I, I think that's all part of it, but yeah, I, I agree. I don't think I, you can I, I mean, I told you box. from the beginning when you were like, like, what is our category, right? Yeah. And I think I, I responded in one and a half seconds. I was literally like, lifestyle. Yeah. And you're like, that's, so well, that's too broad. But it's that's what it broad. is. I, I mean, just, listen, I, I'm going to be brought, I will not listen, be locked in a box. 2023, this is what I would like to do. I'm going to give another one thing I want to do. I want to take things and create stories. And I told you that before, like 2023 is the year of collaboration, but it's also going to be the year of like, learn how to storytell. That's the biggest thing that we can ever do. That's the reason why anyone likes anything. Think of like the biggest successes in the world, mm-hmm. Marvel movies, whatever. It's all storylines. You say storytell through like our vlogs? Through the vlog. Short form? form? Yes, what everything, you... everything, everything. If it's a seven second video, I literally had a good, great talk with this with a very high up person in our company. And they literally said, look at Logan Paul and Jake Paul. They took Vine and learned how to tell stories in seven seconds. That's the reason why the there's so pop out, out there. For sure. Go on YouTube right we now. Should go find we those. should. But like, like the way that they could portray something, and it's not tell this whole elaborate story. Yeah. But it's get someone to like, like when you tell a story, people get invested into the characters, into the storyline. For sure. Think of fucking Game of Thrones, right? I always think of Game of Thrones as the best storyline because they would make you love a character and then kill them. just to murder them. That's, but that's, but that's what it is. It makes wrong. you, no, it's not because it, that's I just what, gave up on that show three different no, times. Exactly. And I had to Google the ending because exactly. I fucking was so frustrated. Exactly my point though because and they have a cult following yeah, because they sure. created this story that has all these other pieces that finally came together and then it's like, what the fuck? But that is the difference. So collaboration, storytelling, other things I want to do. Camera, camera, camera. Finger bang. Ow now brown cow. Ow now brown cow. Watch me get my racks And we bought so hard They think my niggas selling crack We was pushing packs For 2600 a pound We was down Probably had some product in your town But now we back Same straight for all my niggas Call my fam And I made about 10 racks Up off these features in the end For my grandma Hope she know that this for you And you and him For my brothers For my family For my mama for I got my- a